Hey guys, happy Thursday. Having my afternoon, late afternoon cup of coffee charge up. And you know sometimes when I get my coffee, I have the sudden urge to share something. <laughs> Hope you're having a great week. I'm actually having coffee outside today. It's such a beautiful day here in the desert. Um, this is a great time of year in Las Vegas, although most, most times are great times of the year in Las Vegas. So today what I want to talk about, um, I entitled The Game We Forget to Play. And what I'd like to do is just remind you of some of the components of kids playing video games. But as I go through some of these components, I want you to look for parallels between your own effort to launch a business or change a career or make a lifestyle change or um, uh, or embark on a on a big project. Um, I just want you to see, see if you can draw any parallels between what we witness all the time with kids as they do something very, very common, which is play video games. Um, but hopefully I might share some um, insights or some things you haven't thought of in a while um, that might give some insights into what you're doing currently right now and much more important things than video games. So. Um, first, a, a child, a kid out there, they have to um, gain the support of others to get the game, right? Because most kids don't have the resource, the really young kids don't have the resource to get these games on their own. So they have to present the case and then they have to do whatever is required to get somebody to uh, invest in their vision of the future, right? Their vision of them playing the game, having fun, right? In many cases, what they have to do is complete, you know, constantly whine and, and complain and ask over and over and over until parents get tired of hearing the request and go do it, right, sometimes. But kids go out, they have to go, they have to go assemble some type of support to even get access to the game. Now here's an interesting thing that most kids don't go out to get a video game that they know is super easy to play, that's super easy to win. In fact, quite often it's the converse, it's the complete opposite of that. Many of the games that kids are attracted to are very, very, very difficult. And that difficulty in and of itself is part of the draw for them to want to do it. Think about that. Now, once they get the game, and because it's difficult, in the beginning, things are very complicated. They are awkward. They don't know how to be, they're not proficient at doing the game. But at no point doing their constant failure, right? Because they fail over and over and over again at this. But at no point doing their constant failure do they think the game is attacking them or do they think the game makers have something out for them um, or their or do they internalize their failure as some type of personal failure they just know it view it as they haven't acquired the skill set to get through that certain level so what they do is they do it over and over and over again they reach out to people that have successfully gone beyond where they are and they ask for guidance they ask for insight they ask for help um, some games are so complicated that they go out and they find other resources, books, publications, newsletters, etc., on tactics to get through the next level. And then what they do is they pretty much commit to pretend game over and over and over again, over and over and over again, over and over and over again, constantly moving up in levels. And they do this not for recognition, not for any other reward than the reward of getting it done. The actual reward of getting it done. And through some course and period of time, they finally get to the highest level if they ever do. And what they get from this massive focus activity is the self-satisfaction of having accomplished the game. So think about, think about that. Think about what that child in this example goes through just for the fact of playing the game. And think of what adults go through or go through, should go through, to better their situation. You're gonna find that many of the steps required for the kids to go through the different levels of the game successfully are the same steps we need to go through to be successful at our more important game. So I entitled this, you know, the games we forget to play because I think as we, as we grow up and get more wise or more weathered or more beat up, whatever we wanna view our life experience as, we, f we, forget the, we forget the game of being so excited about something that we gather support 
for us to, to do it, to make it happen. We share our enthusiasm. We forget the game of sharing our enthusiasm about um, the nature of the game. We forget the game of reaching out to others that have done more, been more, seen more, accomplished more, and asking for insight and help. We forget that game. We forget to play that game. We forget the game of constant failure, of failing over and over and over as we move forward, as we move up from level to level to level. We forget the joy of doing something that we know we're going to suck at in the beginning. We forget the idea of the beginner's mind. We forget that. We, we tend to now want to do things where we're the expert and only the expert. We shy away from things that are going to expose our, our weaknesses or our, our awkwardness in fact, when in fact the period of awkwardness is one of the greatest signs that progress is in progress, right? So we forget that game. We forget the game of leveling up. We forget the game. We forget the idea of there is an incredibly satisfying um, result of moving up, moving up, moving forward, moving forward. And um, lastly, we forget, we forget the game of, of, of playing the game just for the joy of the game. We forget, we forget the, the, the massive reward we get when we pursue our passions, when we do the things that we're really excited about. We forget that. We forget all these different things. But maybe if we sit back and we think about what children do to do something as, you could argue, meaningless or, you know, as just playing a simple video game, that in watching them, we might gain or be reminded of great lessons that we can apply in a game that matters infinitely more, infinitely more, um, this game we call life. All right. Hopefully you're having a, hopefully I gave you something to think about. Um, maybe over your next cup of coffee, you can think about that and you can see how well you are playing your game right now. Anyway, I hope you have a big weekend coming up, holiday weekend coming up here in the Valley. Memorial Day weekend is a pretty big weekend. I guess it's a pretty big weekend everywhere, but because it's so gorgeous here, I think it's going to be some uh, pool-related shenanigans in store. <laughs> you guys have a great week.